T Smalls, what it do, what it do, my brother. What's going on, weather man? How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. The weather man is in the house along with the most famous comedian, in my opinion. How about you, Mr. Smalls? Oh, man, she is a legend in what she does, man. For real, for real. She looking kind of sassy. You see that? Oh, yeah. I see her over there now. I see her. <laughs> <laughs> like an old fresh bumblebee. What you say about that, Smalls? Hey, man. Beautiful, though. Beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to the Let's Talk Under the Tree podcast. I am the weatherman, Miss Marshall. Warfield is in the house. Hey, T Smalls, give her a, not a computer clap. Put your hand by the mic and give her a clap. Man. There you go. <laughs> Thank you That's so what much. it is. What it is. T Small, show us some love. Look, man, we talking under the tree. T Smalls, go ahead and serenade her and sing your song. Hey, man, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We got Miss Marsha Warfield with us. So, why is, you might as well stay. We under the tree tonight, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. One time for your mind, two times for your soul. Welcome to the tree. The weatherman, Miss Marsha Warfield. T Smalls in the house. We will be right back in 45 seconds. See y'all soon. Kingpin Okay, we are back in the house. I want to know where you've been, Mr. Smalls. Where's she been? We got to get some answers. Well, yeah, man, I, where you been at this all this all long time, man? It's been a minute. Yeah. I, mean, I was waiting for you to tell me. I thought you had an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been back uh, out working for about five, six years. I uh, took a little time off. And retired, got out the game, out the business, out the, got it out of my mind. And uh, then I decided to give it another shot, and I haven't stopped since. That's what I'm talking about. When did you know, you know, coming up, I know you have a comedian background. Me and Smalls was talking about that backstage before you came on. When did you kind of know you kind of had something there? Did you tease people in high school, elementary, take them on lunch money? <laughs> Well, yeah, but then doesn't everybody, you know, everybody has to, you know, you learn how to signify if you're from Chicago. And when I was coming up, we didn't call it ranking. And we had grown <laughs> out of playing the dozens. We had started with playing the dozens and we was just signifying. Let me, I'm going to tell you something about yourself. And uh, <laughs> I, you start doing that like at birth, you know, uh, by the time babies are six months old. Uh, mama says, come here, and the baby goes. <laughs> By the time I was 15, or 14, 15, I, like all the other South Side Chicago girls, we learned how to give the finger without giving the finger. Wow. So okay. Somebody okay. would say something to you, and you go. <laughs> and then we wondered why we got in trouble for that with our parents but thinking back on it it was like <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah we all did that growing up uh, but I kind of grew up with um, the, the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and the advent of stand-up comedy as its own art form. I mean, stand-up comics, yes, had been around, and I grew up watching the Dan, I mean, not Danny Kay, because I don't think he did stand-up, but the Bob Hopes and the, the Jack Benny's and George uh, uh, Burns. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I don't know if it's the weed or Alzheimer's, but sometimes I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew up watching comedy on TV. The I grew up in the era of uh, variety shows. Okay. And Dinah Shore and, and see the USA and your Chevrolet, and they were still advertising those. Barbasol or whatever signs were mm-hmm. the aftershave, Burma shave. That's where it was. Where and they'd have little uh, cereals on the billboard <laughs> that you yeah. read as you drive. Where are you going? And you know that was uh, how I started watching TV. The Mickey Mouse Club. You know when it was first coming on, I was mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. trying to get the little girl watching <laughs> stuff. So stand-up comedy uh, in Chicago was. Uh, Supper clubs, uh, stand-up comics usually worked either uh, opening acts for singers mm-hmm. or um, they worked like uh, at the Regal Theater where they mm-hmm. would have James Brown and and the Motown Review, which is the first show I saw I was eight years old. But um, they would have comedian, MC, MC comedians on those shows. And uh, variety shows, we would see stand-up. That, that's the way we saw it. And then in the 70s, everything went different. It wasn't so much character-driven where somebody was playing a particular character, you know, like Moms Mabley played Moms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love to have hung out with Moms Mabley for real, for real. You know, I would love that. That would have been, uh, oh, if I could go, if I could time travel. That's where you would find me, okay. somewhere in Harlem, with a suit on, <laughs> with my <laughs> <laughs> doing it like how it's supposed to be done, huh? <laughs> okay. Play, play, play at, but I know um, that's right. Yo, <laughs> we, we, uh, that was what stand up was. And then Cosby came along, and and the, the uh, comedy clubs came around in the seventies, and and changed. The game, and then uh, Johnny Carson moved the Tonight Show from New York, so New York wasn't the place to be anymore. It was Los Angeles, and it changed the flavor <laughs> of comedy. Uh, mm-hmm. Comedy before that had a very New York flavor. Got to Los Angeles, it had a whole different, younger, hipper. We were talking, we're still talking the Logan's Run era, where if you're over thirty, uh, you're too old, and and they got rid of you. I mean, uh, uh, it was a young time. And so all these young comics uh, starting out and they had a place to work. You know, comedians never had a place to work out. Right. Uh, Before the comedy clubs came along and they just exploded. I started in 1974. The improv started in 71 or 60. Somebody hadn't been open doing stand-up shows that long. (laughs) And the comedy store opened in 72. Three seventy-two. Right. So I started right in that era, and I got to see uh, so many people. And I know I'm rambling, and it ain't got nothing to do with whatever it was you. Oh, asked. it's it's okay. It's okay. I, I did want to take a moment and uh, and say uh, goodbye to Paul Mooney. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Rest right. in peace. Rest in peace. Yep. Definitely. Yes. Um, Paul was, uh, Paul was interesting when I, I'm seven, 18, 19, maybe 17, 18. And, uh, we're listening to comedy albums, you know, and, uh, and I hear this, uh, young comedian talking about stuff you don't usually hear comedians talking about. <laughs> right. And he's, talking, he's speaking in our code switch. He He's speaking in our voice. This didn't happen. Before then, Black time, and I've said this before, Black comedians did Black comedy for white audiences. Okay. Even uh, once you crossed over, when you were, even if you were a Red Fox or Moms Make Believe, but he is after a while to get the crossover, you, you're speaking in your code switch language. Mm-hmm. This comic wasn't doing that. He was bringing people with him, and they was coming along. And it was 
Craps After Hours. Oh, man. Right. And it was uh, 1969, 7, 69. It was, oh. uh, and I'm uh, listening to this album I have no business listening to because I'm 15. <laughs> and Richard Pryor, of course, was Richard Pryor, budding, fresh, raw. Yeah. Richard Pryor Powell. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's what, that's what we was going to ask you about. Yeah. <laughs> and I hear this laugh throughout the album. This, ah, ha, ha. Throughout the album, every joke, that I hear this laugh. So I get to the comedy store, which is a whole nother story. But I get to the comedy store, and the first night I'm there, the doorman <laughs> uh, is this cute fella. And when he said hello, <laughs> recognize I heard the Midwest urbanity in his voice yeah. uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to the California kind of, you know. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I heard that Midwest familiarity. And uh, I said, you know, I'm a comedian. This is the first time I'm here. I, I just want to come in and watch the show. And he said, yeah, baby, come on. You know, that's cool. I'll put you in the back and I'll introduce you to the comedians as they come in. And uh, you could sit here all night, you know, and you get two drinks and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay. He said, what's your name? And I said, Marshall Warfield. And he said, I'm John Witherspoon. And I said, hey, how you doing? And that's the first night we met. Well, at the second show, the first show had people like uh, Jay Leno, who was 12, and and uh, Dave Letterman, who was 11, I mean, they were, these were very young oh, people, right. and Jimmy Walker, Shirley Hemphill, um, were on the show. And, uh, and the second show, there were some other comedians I had never seen, and I'm watching, and then he brought over this other black comedian. I said, mm -hmm. Marsha, this is Paul. Paul, this is Marsha. <laughs> He said, Paul Mooney, and he said, ah, ha, ha. I said, I know you. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? You're on Craps After Hour. You're the man, that, you're the one that was laughing throughout that. I know that laugh anyway. He said, ah, ha, ha. And then he said, Paul Mooney. And I said, hello, Paul. He said, Mr. Paul Mooney. Oh, oh, and man. Said, yes, Mr. Ted, yes, sir. <laughs> he made you put a hand on it. Huh? Oh, man. And it's funny, that salute uh, played out again a couple of times on the Richard Pryor show, which Paul got everybody. Everybody you saw on this show got on just about because of Paul Moody. Okay. And, uh, uh, so when I they gave me a sketch to do, I had never, I was a kid, I'm just 1977, I'm 23. I don't know any of this, and unlike kids today or a lot of the other kids who might have gone to school and had training or they had been dancing all their life, I had never done this stuff before I was 20 years old and I, I started. So I don't really know how to do stand-up. I don't know any of this stuff, and I'm on the Richard Pryor show. Mm -hmm. Richard Pryor show. This is after Saturday Night Live. This is yes, his own television show. This is the Richard Pryor show right. on NBC. Wow. For real. For yeah. real. I'm from the South Side of Chicago. I understand what I'm saying. I'm from the South right. Side of Chicago. I'm for real in the NBC studio. <laughs> South for real. For real. And then this man walks up, prettiest man I had ever seen in my life until that point, walked up and batted these big eyelashes and said, hi, I'm Clifton Davis. And I said, wow. goodness gracious. <laughs> I mean, I almost fell out. So here I am, and, and they give me a line. <laughs> what? <Okay. laughs> I what kind of a line. What the, don't say a line. Huh? Yeah, right. I know the line. And so <laughs> Richard is the president. And uh, at a press conference, and he asked me, he started asking questions, and then it was my turn. Uh -huh. And uh, he was, yeah, I said, Roberta Davies, Jet Magazine. Right. <laughs> he said, 
Wow. <laughs> and that salute came again. And then he did it again during the roast. I don't know what the joke was when, when I was roasting you. Wow. <laughs> be kind of, that's a kind of comedian thing that uh, validated. Right. Um, when you when you were um doing your act and excuse me and you know no, you're yeah, new, I if you don't jump in I'll talk no, you, no you're fine when you when you just started acting did you get a lot of looks you know coming from the south side of Chicago did anyone give you a look like this right here I'm gonna play a clip for you who is you <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't know how they looked when I was on TV. <laughs> uh, but people were very uh, supportive, uh, excited. I mean, it, there were people. And after a while, you understand that it's because they love you. Right. They start telling you things like, girl, you know, they ain't going to let you in there. You got to. You know it's only so ba 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 and yeah, how do you know it's you know, right. like they like I was saying, you don't have no training, you don't have no connection. How do you get in this? You're leaving home where you're familiar, where we know you, where we can protect you, where we love you, and you're going out by yourself against a lot of odds, and that scares us. Well, you don't hear that subtext. When you're young, you just hear y'all ain't gonna tell me what to do. I'm yeah, exactly, right. exactly. We right. know everything when we are young, right? And I was too stupid to be scared. I was just not afraid, and uh, I left home at 22 and moved to Los Angeles and by myself and saw no obstacle I could imagine at that time. And mm. fortunately. It worked out. I was still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing yeah. from this side, I would be just like my parents were. I would be just like my family was. I would be, no, you don't understand what you're going out there into. You need to de- 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 slow down. And I would be exactly the same way. And hopefully, yes. so that really make it, that really want to, would do what they have to do anyway. Right. But you weren't scared to step out on faith. Right. Yeah. You weren't scared. To, yeah. You had the faith, right? Small. So you wasn't scared to step out. I mean, that's, a, that's, you got to follow. It's a thing called following your heart. Right. When you follow your heart, you can't go wrong. And that, you know what? It has been true to this point, even hearing from um Miss Warfield, that when you step out on faith and you follow your heart, guess what? You can't go wrong. Well, right. I'm sitting here in my office and I call it my hub. And I say, this is the place where thoughts become things. Yes, preach it. And um, everybody needs to have that place and to realize that things come out of, this is magic. When we conjure up magic and what magic is, or however you call those things that can't be explained, whether it's religious or, Mm -hmm. or the universes or whatever it is, that magic starts in your head Mm -hmm. what a thought everything we have everything we touch everything we know started in somebody's head it what Mm -hmm. didn't exist and one day somebody said fuck a bird i can fly (laughs) (laughs) and everybody said he's crazy lock her up she's out of here he said he could fly. <laughs> and the next right. thing you know, homeboy is gone. Yeah. Now everybody flying. Okay. So <laughs> trust that what's in your head can be somebody else's blessing, somebody else's gift, somebody else's Ooh. whatever. Whether it's just a laugh or, or a plane. Yep. But it has to start here, and you have to trust that, know that, that that magic is there. You have to believe it to achieve it. You just have to believe. Right. Well, you got to know You got to know possibilities. Yeah. When I was coming up on the south side of Chicago, and I realized it as I got older, the thing that is more detrimental than anything else is that they don't tell the children in school that they can't. 
They just don't know that they can. They don't know that they, they don't know what to imagine. Career day when I was in high school was four military recruiters mm-hmm. and somebody from a factory. And then one day I went to a career day at a, a suburban school. They got people, you could be a juggler. You could be a physicist. Juggler. You can play, play. You can, they have people who make widgets that sell to other widgets. And they're really people who do that? Yes, and you can <laughs> do that too. We don't have those, we, we don't implant them. So they can't really grow. Those seeds can't really grow. And this, the children are the same, the children. <laughs> These children are brilliant. I, I see them on TikTok. I see them on, on social media. Right. I, see, I listen to their music. I'm, like, I'm blown away daily. They're brilliant. But right. we just don't tell them they can. We will tell them they can't before we tell them they can. And once you know you can, or once you know somebody believes you too, they can't stop you. That's true. No ceilings. Yeah. That's a blessing right there. You know, hey, say hey, Smalls, she actually kind of looked like a real bailiff. What you think? Oh, yeah. I, I, hey, uh, I, I, I was I was this close to calling her Roz. No, <laughs> I'll answer. Actually, don't she look like a Roz? Oh, man. Look, man. Roz, the no nonsense bailiff. If you was in her court, she will whip your ass. <laughs> you know, right now, now for uh, last season, I was Tony. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Tony on uh, on nine one one. Right. Yeah. Played that for four episodes, so I evolved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because you're a little older now, is it harder to get roles compared to back in the day? It's hard if you say it's hard. It's hard for everybody. Ain't nobody giving away nothing. Right. Ain't nobody giving away money. Ain't nobody giving away roles. Ain't nobody giving away nothing. <coughs> We're not geared that. We're not taught that. We're not taught to give nothing. Right. If you come home and say, I gave away my life. You did what? We're going to get that back. You don't get nothing. So, <laughs> you know, when the people say, oh, they make so much money, they're paying them so much money. Yes, but they have it to pay. Think about that. Mm-hmm. That is true. Think about how much money they have to pay. And ain't nobody, are you going to pay a dollar more than you have to for anything? They're paying exactly how much that costs. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That's right. So, uh, <laughs> our horizons are, are you know, huge, uh, but sometimes the limitation boxes can be real, even though they don't really exist, they, you know, but they can be very real and they can lock you in there. Right. Me and Smalls were talking backstage before you came on about Richard Pryor. Was he really a plum fool? <laughs> <laughs> was he really a plum fool, Richard Pryor? You know, you we know you work with Richard Pryor. Was he really actually a trip in real life? <laughs> uh, not around me. He was very quiet and uh, uh, very polite, okay. and uh, uh, he was just a, a sweetheart. He uh, and and a lot of comics, a lot of comedians. Robin Williams was not Robin, you know. Flipping around, Robin did a lot, but the lights come on and boom, and there you go. So, uh, Richard was kind of soft spoken, and yes, ma'am. Wow, and uh, <laughs> and what I expect, what I expected, but a lot of people wouldn't, a lot of people don't expect that, and I find that a lot of the celebrity men I've met are a lot like the men I grew up around and men I've known my whole life. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, um, it surprises people when I say Tupac was very polite and very nice and spoke very well to my parents who were around me. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. You don't, they don't expect it. We expected it because that's how you act when you're around somebody's right. parents. Right. But, uh, 
somehow we are we're not supposed to we only see this certain mean mug and thug in the image right. uh, in general whether he whether it's a, a Tupac or a Sidney Poitier mm -hmm. you know uh, we rarely see the whole picture that all of these young men that I've met who have these mean mug <laughs> <laughs> Personal, <laughs> just sweethearts. They just—I mean—they're the kind of people you would invite in your home. Right. Hey, Smalls. What's up? I'm going to give you the honors to ask our favorite question about acting. You know that favorite question that everybody always answers: who they want to work with. Go ahead and ask. We're going to well, see. Well, this is the no. question we always act <laughs> ask actors. We yeah. would we would love to know who would be an actor that you would want to work with in the industry today or uh, uh, would love to work with before she answered before she answered give her a drum roll human drum roll uh, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and a drink <laughs> in a minute uh, yes. there's so many I, it's hard for me to to sit here and say oh this person or that person give us two um dang i work i worked with angela bassett Okay. And okay. Uh, um, Naisha Hines on nine one one, and and they were wonderful to work with uh, for different reasons. You know, I was not as familiar with Aisha, but watching her work is just—I mean, right. I feel maternal. I feel like I'm so proud of this woman. Yeah, y'all had a lot of good scenes on there too, man. I had a yeah, lot of good scenes. Be working, and no. so. Uh, but I've had the pleasure. See, this is the thing. I've had the pleasure. My first exposure to uh, to this business has been with some amazing people. I did the Marvel Collins story with Cicely Tyson and mm -hmm. Morgan Freeman. Right. What am I gonna say now? <laughs> No, no. Who, who, who would you like to work with? We talking like about somebody who you haven't worked with yet, but who would you like to work with? Everybody. I uh, wonder where I don't know. I can't name one because that that would be not fair. <laughs> <laughs> we got Rouse now. Now we getting Rouse. Yeah, that's Rouse <laughs> right now. That's Rouse all day. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. But everybody usually say Denzel. Well, I would like to work with Denzel. I'd like to work with, look, who did I see last, okay? Whoever I saw last, that's who I want. I mean, yeah, I want to work with Denzel. I'd love to work with Viola Davis. I'd love to work with, wow. uh, uh, who did I just see? Oh, I just saw uh, Judas and uh, uh, whatever, Judas and uh the Fred Hampton story. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, talking yeah. about the, uh, the, uh, the Black Messiah. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. All of them. Everybody. <laughs> with oh, all of them. That's fair amazing. enough. They're amazingly talented. They're that's so fair enough. Uh, uh, awesome. And that, like I've had, like I said, the pleasure of having one of the very first roles with uh, Don Cheadle and, uh, and, uh, Dennis Haysburg and uh, Fair enough. the people. So, yeah. Hell, me and Smalls want to work with you. Smalls, sing it that song real quick. I'm going to sing mine. We might can do a voiceover or something. Sing it, Smalls. Uh, man, I, I, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Night court. <laughs> I'll just make it out something, man. You I'm just fooling fine. around. That's all. That's you, all full I'm gonna right. think something. You never find a love like mine. <laughs> I want to love you like I do. That's all you get. That's all you get. That's it, man. Can't tease me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would lose. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand. I think around two thousand seventeen. Did your mom pass away that year? Am I right? Oh no, my mother passed away in uh, nineteen ninety five. But you came out oh, okay. in 2017 with a story about yourself. Would you like yeah. to share that with the viewers? A lot of people don't know that. That kind of touched my heart. 
<laughs> well, it's say, and I, again, I told you, I grew up in the civil rights movement. Right. I mean, I was born. I was born in the year of Brown versus the Board of Education. Uh-huh. So I grew up with, uh, with those kind of morals. And uh-huh. I had no idea I was gay because there was no such thing as gay in the world my family created for me. They're just, uh-huh. it didn't exist. Looking back now, uh-huh. there were looks over, supposedly over, you know how your parents look at each other over your head? Right. Mm-hmm. And think you don't see it, but you don't know what the hell they're looking for. Yeah, <laughs> what, that, what that mean? Yeah, you're right. A lot of those when I was coming up and a lot of questions now, I'm like, oh, oh, they were trying to, you know, that was a gay check they was checking, but <laughs> I didn't have any awareness of this, so I just I was different. Um, so when I finally realized in my twenties, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> hey, okay, <laughs> this is nice, uh-huh. uh, and I was uh, seeing this woman, and I told my mother, you know, and. I was gay, and she said, uh, I know, which pisses me off. It still pisses me off. <laughs> right. It pisses me off when anybody says it. If I say I'm gay and you say I know, what the hell you mean you know? If <laughs> I'm saying it, then that means there must have been a situation of somewhere I didn't feel comfortable or feel like you knew what my tea was. And so yeah. I'm trying to tell you now, and you're going to sit there and tell me that you already knew. Why didn't you act like you knew? See, that pisses me off. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but she said, I know. And I said, well, you know, uh, we talked. And I think she asked me if I was going to live that life or whatever. And I said, yeah. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to come out publicly or whatever. She said, well. Do me a favor. They don't come out as long as I'm alive. Wow. I don't care what you do. You live your life, but don't come out publicly as long as I'm alive. And that sounds horrible. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. it didn't sound that horrible. It sounded uncomfortable mm-hmm. in the 80s. Right. But the world was different. And, uh, even with the amount of homophobia and intolerance that there is now, it was vastly different. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the down low had not been applied to that situation at that time. Nobody was talking about being on the down low. You were in the closet or... Uh, I was just about to say that. (laughs) Down low came about after in the aftermath of, of AIDS when the stigma for being gay got to be even bigger because you could breathe on somebody and kill them according to what was happening in people's heads. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a whole different time and it's outrageous, but at the time it didn't feel all that unreasonable. and it wasn't until 93 or so or four that Ellen came out and yes. yeah, uh, I remember that. Yeah, well, I remember that. And Rosie and, and other people started coming out, but it was it was okay to be an open secret if you were Liberace or if you were uh someone who had made a persona out of being gay but now admitted, never admitted they were gay. Yes. yes. Um like Hell, Mom, no. talked about, you know, um, so, yeah, I, I honored her request and beyond, you know, I didn't come out. I wasn't comfortable mm-hmm. until 2016, no, it might have been 15, 16, something like that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and do it really in a, in a you know, kind of slick way. <laughs> <I did it. laughs> you say slick, huh? <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, yeah, you know what it is, yeah, I'm keep on going. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then people picked up on it, I'm like, yeah, okay, and I, and I, Hey, keep it moving, all right, <laughs> that's what's up. And I visit it a little more every once in a while, and then, oh, you know, I told y'all last week, I was gay, right? <laughs> and so it's been a process of discovery and, and awakening for me uh, in real time. 
you know, uh, I, I hopefully my life and my my public life happens in real time. You know, right. I am mm-hmm. not trying to recapture a past. I am not trying to be nobody's future. I am in this moment. This is what it is today, and we'll take it, you know, wherever it goes tomorrow. Uh, and I, uh, so what you saw or what you know or what you've heard, that's what happened. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah, right. There is no, right. Nothing hot is open. I'm pretty open about it. Yeah. Well, you love who you love. You know, in the black community, we kind of frown upon that. But as I got older, you know, you love who you love. Your business yeah. is your business. That's how I look at it. Hey, uh, Hey, at the base of every ism is the church of Jesus. <laughs> Sign of the S. Right. <laughs> you was on, uh, on Live in Color. You worked with Jamie Foxx. How was he on the set? Oh, they were very nice. You have to understand that it. And I, I, I keep trying to make this point that these are young black men. They were young black men. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Younger than me. Yes. So they called me ma'am. Uh, he, he, they treated me like I was an adult and like they were, yes, ma'am, how you doing? You know, and, and so uh, he was very nice and easy to work with. He was very young and I knew Keenan and, uh, and the Wayans brothers from, uh, I had known Keenan for a long time. Uh, and so I knew a lot of people on the show, mm-hmm. but it was exciting to get to work with these new young comedians who were, uh, he and uh, Tommy Davis and I think were in the skit. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, it was exciting, you know, I, I love talent. I love the talent I see. And so I get, I get jazzed That's when good. I get to work with the with these young or old people. Right. Jim Carrey was on the set too. One thing I like about Jim Carrey, he did say this, he did give some acknowledgement. He said during his young career, he was asked by a lot of people of his race why he's on the show, you know, with a lot of African Americans. And he said this is true because the white folks would not give him a shot. And he thanked the Wayman brothers for giving him a shot that his own race would not do. Well, you know, I think uh, people, what gets lost when you start hollering for equality is you hear the holler and you stop hearing the equality. Ain't nobody asking to take your stuff. We just want a chance at their home. So uh, people hear something else when that's not what's happening. And what's happening is uh, Keenan saw something in this performer. Exactly. Period. That's right. That's it. You know, yeah. and it's the same shot we all want. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing me everywhere I go. Yes, I'm bringing the blackness. I might not be bringing it the way you want it or the way you imagine <laughs> it or whatever. I like. But that. I'm bringing me wherever I go. So uh, uh, I just want a shot at the at the role, like anybody else, and. Uh, Somehow, the sometimes demanding that sounds like you dirty people. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, beat you all up and run over your cat. <laughs> and it's, it's just, man, just let me, just let me have a shot. That's it. Just That's give it. me one shot. That's all. And I, and if, if you don't think I'm good enough, then at least I got an opportunity to show you. Like everybody else. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Right. So what's new for you now? You know, the COVID supposedly. Is going away. So how did that affect you during the full blast of the COVID? Well, COVID, uh, I got back from Hawaii. I went to Hawaii for my birthday, and my birthday is March 5th. So when I I went to Hawaii, it was the beginning of people starting to rumble about this thing that they were talking about in China might be a little (laughs) something to worry about. And I get, we get on the plane, and there are people in masks and a lot of Asian people and a lot of all kinds of people in masks. This is not usual. 
But we get to Hawaii and it seemed, you know, it's off season in March. So it was nice and pleasant and calm and mm-hmm. cool. And uh, and every once in a while we heard the news, but what, it wasn't a panic. Got back and they started talking about we're going to have to close down the country. And so I was doing a show at the Strat um, at the LA Comedy Club. And I said, this is going to be bigger than we've been thinking. I'm not coming back. So I didn't come. I didn't go back. I didn't work at all throughout the pandemic, except uh, when I got the 911 call. And then uh, Mm -hmm. things were starting to look a little more relaxed. And as soon as I could get the vaccine, I got the vaccine. um, And I just stayed you know, following the protocols and everything um, and took the whole thing seriously because, you know, it's better to take a little time off than it is to try to tempt fate and end up one of those people who didn't right. make it. None of them trying to get it. I keep telling people it ain't like they was out there trying to get it and you're going to be smarter and stay at home and not get it, you know, some of them was at home. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, right, right. Uh, that's why I say get the shot. You know, we take a lot of medicines that we don't know what they do, and they tell you and give you lists of stuff, and you could your nose could fall off, and then you turn around, <laughs> and you might even die. They tell you that on the freaking it's commercial. It's you true. Know? Right, right. That's true though. But I ain't taking the vaccine. Why? You take, you know, we that's yeah. how we do medicine. They take right. this poison so I can see pictures of your insides glowing. Yeah, say it. And right. we do that. So, you know, I took the vaccine as soon as I could get it. I'm fine. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speak, speaking of vaccine, man, I seen you uh you had a tweet and it said that uh Washington State allows free marijuana with COVID-19 <laughs> shots. So I was thinking about that when I read that. I said, man, if they was offering that in the state of Florida, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But then, people. You, know, you got people saying, well, if they going to have to bribe you with weed, what you got to be stoned to get the shot? I ain't taking <laughs> A puff give. <laughs> hey, they'd be like, hey, look, man, I'm going to get this COVID shot, man. They're giving out some marijuana, man. They're going to give you some free weed, man. Matter of fact, they'd be jumping back in line getting, getting four so far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready to go get me another one. Oh, man. They free. Right. <laughs> they free. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? That's I, took the vac- I-, I took the vaccine. I can relate to you, Miss Warfield. That night I went to sleep. I said, Lord, just let me wake up, please. (laughs) We don't know, but, you know, you got one thing on this side and another thing on this side, and you're saying both of them uh, have a risk. Now, which risk is the one I want to take? Right, right. And I said, you know, so far they might, even if you stretch it, they might have a couple of hundred people who died from the COVID vaccine. We got 600,000 people in this country who died from yes. COVID. So give me the shot. It's a no brainer. <laughs> right. Since everyone have to wear their mask, that's the last thing I have. I think Smalls wears his mask. He just wears it out the shower, in the shower. He just a mass man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but you can't be too careful, man. You can't be too careful. <laughs> since, since this is a mass world. Are you glad that you have to wear the mask so the fans won't recognize you when you're in public? Is it to your advantage? Oh, don't nobody recognize me. My fans are dead. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not all of them now. You, hey, you got two of them you talking with right now. <laughs> I, I tell you, these children be like, uh, Miss, you want to move? I mean, they don't know who I am. So I don't have that wow. problem. I just... Um, I just think it's ironic that you can go into a bank and oh, they'll yeah. make you put oh. a mask on. <laughs> you, yeah. Hey, I'm just hey, I'm okay. for, hey, two you years ago that was unheard of. That ain't never happened. That ain't never happened. Right. 
tree. You know, if you walked anywhere past the front door with a mask on, yeah, so, <laughs> somebody's calling somebody. Karen is calling somebody on you. Man, you couldn't even walk in there with a hat on. They want to, hey, take your oh. hat off when you come in here. We want to see who you are, everything. That's right. That's right. So and, it's amazing. We're living in amazing time for amazing reasons. Hat, <laughs> shades, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. In fact, shade. <laughs> you got too much facial hair. I can't hear Hey, I ain't gonna lie now. When I when I be wearing my mask, I feel some type of way when I have my shades on. So I take my shades off and just wear my mask because I don't want nobody to feel some type of way like, hey, what's going on here? You know what I mean? So I yeah, do that much. They're gonna watch you anyway. You might as well give them something. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. Hey Smalls, let's give her let's give her some love. I'm gonna see if you can do this imitation. Miss Marshall Warfield, straight out of Chicago. Let me hear you. Let me hit it. Miss Marshall Warfield, straight out of Chicago. South side, that is. Yeah, Make that's sure how they that's how they that's how they talk up there. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Marshall Warfield, straight out of Chicago. Chicago. See, <laughs> uh, y'all got that, that southern thing. You gotta get that Marshall Warfield. There it is. There, hey, look, you, <laughs> hey, hey, you, you got it. You got it. You got, you got it. it. Marsha <laughs> Wild. It's like how you spell Wild? Like W W U A Marsha Wildfield. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good God, yeah. yeah. Drag in your voice if you're from the uh, from Chicago. See, it just yeah. comes yeah. with the little kids. I could. <laughs> the finger without the finger that's what's up <laughs> at t small say a little prayer for the sister that she have a successful 2021 and she get another sitcom as well thank you lord thank you god for man for blessing miss marsha warfield with her presence man continue to bless her and her endeavors man it's a pleasure an honor to be interviewing you in the night we wish you very, very more success. We want to give you your flowers now today. In Jesus' name, God, amen. 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 You, so you did pretty good, Smalls. Most of your prayers, are, you know, might make me want to get a drink after you finish praying, but you did pretty good. <laughs> I, try, I, try, I try to make it short and sweet, man. Short and sweet. Yeah, yeah you did pretty good. Don't forget to uh, hang on, Miss Marsh. We're going to do a surprise phone call after we go. Okay. Right. right. About 30 seconds or so, 40 seconds, something like that. Right. But we had a blast and Lord bless you. I am the weatherman. T Smalls in the house. Miss Marsha Warfield. <laughs> From Chicago, South Side. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we wish you the best. And uh Corona's not gone yet. So wear your mask if you want to wear your mask. If you don't, T Smalls what they say. Man, that's your damn business. That's right. One time for your mind, two times for your soul. The weatherman, Miss Marsha Warfield. T Smalls out under the tree podcast 2021. See you when want to be ya. Uh...